Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us on our 2022 journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that as we embark upon the year 2022, that you will help us to claim and retain all of the promises that you bless us with along the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 through 26. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. That's Exodus chapter 10, verse 21 through 26. And it reads, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hands towards the heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, a darkness to be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the heaven, and there was pitch darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They did not see one another, nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the people of Egypt, or uh, Israel rather, had light where they lived. All the people of Israel had light where they lived. And then Pharaoh called Moses and said, go serve the Lord. Your little ones also may go with you. Only let your flock and your herd remain behind. But Moses said, you must also let us have sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also must go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind, for we must take of them to serve the Lord our God. And we do not know with what we must serve the Lord uh, until we arrive there. I want to talk for a few minutes today about take everything with you. Take everything with you. It's much like a preacher uh, or most preachers that go to the pulpit on Sunday morning to preach. He wants to, to leave nothing unsaid. He want to leave everything in the pulpit. Don't bring anything with them. You know, a lot of times I know I do. There are times when I say to myself, oh, I forgot to say this. My, 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 my desire is to say everything while I'm there. Leave nothing unsaid. And God wants us to leave nothing uh, for Satan to use for his glory. But take everything with us. The ninth plague of of darkness is the incident in which our text is centered around today. Darkness is symbolic of the unknown. The reason, the reason certain things happen to us is often unknown or not understood. The reason we go through certain hardships or mishaps can easily be unknown. The future is hidden in darkness or the unknown to us. But we can always be thankful for our connections with the omniscient God, the all-knowing God. As Job was in chapter 17 in the book of Job, he says, in verse 1, he says, Job asked the question, where then is my hope? My, hope, my spirit is broken and my days are extinct and the graveyard is ready for me. Job is saying, I know where I am presently, but the way to my end is not in view. He's left with only his hope concerning his future. He knows that the graveyard is ready for him whenever he arrives. He does not need to take in, make any appointments with the graveyard because others will handle that part of his life. His hope remains in the love and faithfulness of the Lord God. The one in whom he spoke of when he said, though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Paul in the book of Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 24 and 25, also the English Standard Version says, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what 
he sees. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The psalmist in Psalms 40, verse 1 through 3 says, and this is the King James Version, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. Verse 3 says, And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. And many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Isaiah himself was familiar with the all-knowing God because he stated in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31, he asked the question, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, and I love that when, when the Bible puts a but in there, because uh, it always indicates that God is about to turn things around. So Isaiah says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and they shall mount up with wings as eagles and they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. Our lives are filled with buts that, that, that life is going one way, but God shows up and turn things around. I remember just like it was yesterday before I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and before I was converted, how I was headed in a totally different direction than I'm traveling now. But God showed up. And what a difference the Lord has made in my life. Uh, so walk with me through the text just for a few minutes. Now, we don't know how long uh, after the locusts left Egypt that God sent the ninth plague. But the darkness over the land for three days proved that Jehovah was greater than Horus, which uh, was along with Ra, uh, both of them uh, of whom the Egyptians revered as sun gods. The darkness wasn't the natural result of a sandstorm, but was a miracle from the hand of the God of the Hebrews. There was light for the Israelites in the land of Goshen, just as there would be light for them as they marched out of Egypt. The people of the world, are uh, 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 the Egyptians, are symbolic of them, and they and people of the world walk in darkness, but the people of God walk in the light, according to John chapter three verse nineteen through twenty one, and it, this is the English Standard Version of of John chapter three verse nineteen through twenty one. It says, "And this is the judgment: the light has come into the world, and the people love darkness rather than the light." because their works were evil. Everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Not only do, do the people of God walk in light, but they are always ready to call on him for help when uh, we are in trouble. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and made one more offer. 
the Jews could go on their journey to worship the Lord, but they couldn't take their flocks or herds with them. Pharaoh's plan was to confiscate all their livestock uh, to replace what he had lost in the plagues and then send his army to bring back the Jews uh, back to Egyptian slavery. Moses and Aaron rejected that offer, not only because they saw through his crafty plan, but because they knew that Israel had to obey the all of the will of God. And we must in this day and age know for sure that we must obey all of the will of God, not part of his will, but all of his will. Pharaoh was a proud man and proud people don't like to be outsmarted by those whom they consider their inferior. Moses and Aaron had refused his four offers and had insisted that he let the Israelites go. These two humble Jews had proved themselves more powerful than the self-exalted Pharaoh of Egypt, who was thought to uh, be a son of the gods. But his mighty judgment, the God of the Hebrews, had brought the great nation of Egypt to its knees. By God's mighty judgment, the God of the Hebrews had brought the great nation of Egypt, Egypt to its knees, and both the leader and the common people in the land held Moses in high regard, according to Exodus chapter 11, verse 3. Pharaoh was a beaten man, but he wouldn't admit it. So often we don't want to admit when we're wrong or when we've been outsmarted or beat. Instead, Moses uh, used his authority to try to intimidate Moses. He warned Moses that if, if he came back into the palace to see Pharaoh, he would be killed. Moses was to understand that there were to be no more official audiences before the Pharaoh. But before Moses left the throne room, he delivered God's final warning about the last plague, the death of the firstborn. Pharaoh had threatened to kill Moses, but God was going to slay every firstborn in the land of Egypt and then drown Pharaoh's soldiers drown his armies in the Red Sea. And in spite of what Pharaoh said about not seeing Moses, on Passover night, Pharaoh would once again call for Moses and plead for his help. In uh, chapter 12, verse 31, the hardening of Pharaoh's heart is a warning to all of us if the sinful human heart doesn't respond by faith to God's word, it cannot be transformed by the grace of God. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 through 27, and this is the message version that really speaks volume and it's easy to understand. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26 and 27, the message version says, I'll give you a new heart put a new spirit in you and I'll remove the stony heart from your body and replace it with a heart that God willed, not self-willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you to and live by my command. There will be a whole world full of men and women like Pharaoh who will behold God's judgment and still not repent. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. 
That's what Paul says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And therefore, as we head into the new year, a time when hope is the most precious thing in our traveling pouch or suitcase of faith. Let us rely or trust on the promises of God. Let us take everything the enemy wants to take from us. Let us take it to serve God in 2022. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 through 8, the New American Standard Version says, uh, let's see, it says, make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you. I will never, ever forsake you. So that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Remember those who lead you or have led you, who spoke the word of God to you and considering the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Take everything with you. As we walk by faith and not by sight, hold to God's unchanging hand. Always remember what uh, took place one Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died so that we can live. He died so that we could have life and have it more abundantly. They buried him in a borrowed tomb, but right early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to enable us to talk right, power to enable us to walk right, power to enable us to live right as we journey through 2022. He became sin in our place so that we could become the righteousness of God. I feel like saying something I haven't said in a while, haven't heard anybody say it in a, in a while. It's a question. Ain't he all right? He brought us through the darkness, through all of the unknown of the last year. And I'm confident that he will guide us safely through this year. He might lead us beside the still waters sometime. And then sometime our shepherd might just lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. But he'll be with us. And our enemies can't travel through that way without fear. So let us uh, close with prayer and remember he rose with all power in his hands. Our Heavenly Father, walk with us on this tedious journey of 2022. Help us to cling to your promises as never before. Help us to always be confident that you will never leave us nor forsake us. It is in Jesus' powerful name that we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I pray that you will have a uh, wonderful and prosperous and healthy new year. And remember, nothing is unknown to God. Whatever happens when we get to it, he has known about it since the beginning of time. Nothing catches him by surprise, and he's the answer to whatever uh, lies in darkness that is there to cause us to fear. He's the one that we can go to and ask, 
how to handle it. Take care. Love you. Have a wonderful 2022. Bye-bye.